But before we get to the questions, let's talk. Uh, you know, last week, um, if you tuned in, we talked a little bit about how the whole COVID-19 coronavirus thing has affected our worlds personally and, and how, we're, how we're thinking about that in the world around us and the questions that a lot of people have been sending our way. I thought it would be good today if we just discuss a little bit about how it's affected our church. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is not personally, but how we're operating these days because you know, now we're completely online um, on Sunday mornings. No physical gatherings uh, are allowed, uh, or at least in the form that we can do. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, right. Um, I won't get into that. But um, everything has... We've we had could to start right now having <coughs> groups of 10 show up. You sign up for them. In shifts. So, yeah, y'all just come 24-7 every day of the week, but you got to sign up. And if you show up at a wrong time, we're going to send you home. All right. We're not doing that. Just yeah, be real I will clear. say, if that happens, I'm probably going to resign. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be here for all that. Yeah, there That's you okay. go. Uh, but seriously, uh, we've had to shift, make a shift in the way we go about doing church. And I thought it would be helpful to a lot of people that love our church to, to hear what we're thinking these days. What's the motivation behind that? Because there are... There are thought processes. We do think. <laughs> we have thoughts about why we're doing what we're doing. We not only think, we argue. We argue yes. a lot. <laughs> we argue yes. and we yes. try to figure it out. As if you couldn't tell from yes, this we dynamic. Argue. There okay. are more people, the three of us argue, but there are more people that yes. argue and people, and rightfully so, they ought to. They have good opinions right. and strong opinions. And some that are strong that aren't good. True. <laughs> Always. <laughs> some that are good that aren't strong. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That is also true. And some, some that really are strong and those good that aren't opinion. Those will be mine. They're good. They're just not strong. <laughs> oh my God. They're just quiet. That's oh, wow. what you wish. They're just great opinions, though. <laughs> We're gonna now assign. Let's uh, take a secret ballot and sign who we think is in each of those categories. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll only share it here and not with. We might share it with y'all, but don't tell anybody. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's start with uh, Sunday. Um, now, the biggest shift, if you've been watching for the past few weeks, is. We decided instead of just doing what we always do on Sunday from a stage and just open, what we used to call it uh, when we would put a service online is we are opening up a window mm -hmm. for people to peer in. It's kind of like they're not walking into the room, but they're peering through the window and they're looking at, okay, here's what happens on a Sunday morning at Community Christian. And it gives them a view in the hopes that they would see through that window and say, I want to go inside there and come right. into the room. Well, we had to think differently about that because now there's no way for anybody to walk into that room. So what's the a point in opening up a window? With prison bars. That's on right. The side of it. So look through. There ain't no way you're coming in that window. Right. Or it's just me doing this. <laughs> and that's creepy. That's, that's a little, creepy. That's a little Stop creepy. it. That's no one creepy. wants the image of. Mm. Ooh. Stop. So anyway, so instead of doing that because there's you know it's just cruel. Why open a window when you're not opening a door? We decided to do something different. We tried. We're trying these days to become more. Interactive. I really like that phrase. Why open a window when you don't open a door? You like that phrase? I told I you I had good opinions. You do have good opinions. Well, it's good opinions. If you said phrase. that before, I have missed it. It's a really that, that was well said. I think it just popped out of my head. So. Well. That's that was good. Okay, thank you. You should pop things out more often. Right. If you would shut up, I'd I have know, more I, time to it pop It may out be things. that I'm talking too much. Yeah. Think. Okay. So let's talk about that. That uh, I'm talking too much. No. How we are instead of opening a window, we're trying to make a, an experience on Sunday that is interactive and communal from a distance. That's a challenge. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Yeah, I don't know who wants to go first on that. I, I'm okay with it. It's frustrating to me. Mm -hmm. It's very, very frustrating to me. And uh, it's made uh, us confront a lot of our methodology and uh, things that we have always thought. And I think it's been good. I think it's going to be good. We're going to eventually get to good places on this. Mm -hmm. But it is a real, real, real challenge of those two things. Uh, interactive and communal in what is basically a one-way communication. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know people often think that's what happens at church other than what happens, you know, when you talk to people. But when you're sitting in a room with people, even when you don't say things, uh, our bodies are a part of what we do. And our yes. there, mm -hmm. we are communicating with each other all the time in presence when yes. we are present. And, uh, we don't get any of that. Um, it, it's just really hard to do 
what has been called for us to do, what it has reduced us down to, and I think we are confronting, I hope other churches are confronting it as well, is are we just a content delivery system? Mm. Right. Yeah. And uh, we don't think we are a content delivery system. Mm -hmm. We certainly don't think that's what Jesus encouraged the church to be was a mm -hmm. content delivery system. And but this is really a challenge to that. I, I have a lot more to say, but I'm gonna stop so you guys can because you have better ways to say it probably. Well, I think the the the, the what you're getting at I think is huge of trying that, that there is something when we're physically together that we experience that we don't experience just by the nature of not being together, and so yes. we're trying to find ways to create that. And I think it's important for us to at least acknowledge it. And so this may not be exactly what. Uh, Jason intended when we talk about it, but I think you can't fix a problem until you acknowledge what the problem is, until mm -hmm. you know what you're looking at. That's right. And and one problem that I think we have to address, and not just us or the people on our staff. You mean we as a church. The church, yeah. as, as believers. That we yeah, have people to, on the other side of this camera that consider themselves community Christians. Yeah, too. absolutely. Yeah. That, that, you know, we are the ones that are, and once again, I don't mean us, I mean the staff of CCC are the ones coming up with the structure of things, but there are even beliefs that all of us, so all of us hold on to as believers, that can become problems if we don't address what they are. And one of them really is this idea that everything spiritual is just something that happens inside of me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, you know, the kind of, this is the, the, the big word you get when you go to college for it is uh, ultimately is the idea behind this was Gnosticism, which is this idea that what is spiritual is better than what's physical, and that somehow there's truth that exists within me that I don't have to express in my body. And so in the Bible, you see a lot where they're trying to figure out whether Jesus had a physical body or whether he was just a spirit. Here's how I see it manifesting many of us. What he just said, which is totally true, is that God doesn't just interact with my soul. He interacts with all of me, which is why Jesus said, and the you know ancient... Uh, writers in uh, Deuteronomy when they say love the Lord your God with all your heart your soul your mind your strength all of you it's it's a physical thing there is a physical nature to the way we love one another and we interact that now has had to change just by the nature of the world we live in that's the problem we're trying to address as well is that there's this nature to the way that we interact with each other and there is value to it but now that's had to change. And so that's really the kind of thing we're addressing. Because like mm -hmm. he said, if it's just content that you, in your mind, get to engage with or in your heart you feel, well, then I can just deliver that to you. And mm -hmm. whenever you're ready to accept it, you can accept it. But all of us kind of have to figure out, okay, there may be ways in which things I could have done physically without even knowing I was doing it. I may now have to become intentional about in different ways. And so we're trying to do that to some degree with, you know, I mean, communion's one great way that we get to do that. That's a physical thing that you get to do. But let's even say for that, I, and I feel, and you guys know, I've had, I have very, uh, I've been anti in the way that, um, the way I understand communal, communion by its nature, it's communal. Communal, yes. Correct. So, so well, uh, when, so when, when, they, when the writers of Scripture said, when you do it, don't neglect the body of Christ, I don't necessarily think they were talking about the physical body of Christ. They, they were not. talking about the body of Christ, well, no, the church. You were, you because were taking the, the context Christ, of the, that statement yeah, in 1 Corinthians 11, uh -huh. it starts with him discussing the love feast, which they mm -hmm. did with that whole thing. And he's basically rebuking, they had this whole meal, which we call a fellowship meal, yeah. and they took communion at the end of it. But rich Christians, they had, it was the first organization in any kind of Greek-Roman culture that allowed slaves and slave owners to be the same. Mm -hmm. Men and women mm -hmm. were in the same place. Mm -hmm. Rich and Jews poor and with Jews and Gentiles yeah. in the same place. But in Corinth, he's addressing the fact that you got rich people, they bring in all their wine and all their food and all their stuff, and they sit at one end of the fellowship table... And then you got the poor people over here who have nothing to eat because they're slaves of some of these people. Mm -hmm. And he says, you're getting drunk and you're going home hungry yeah. and then y'all want to sit down and act like you're one body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, that ain't, that ain't the right. way we do communion. Yeah. You have to notice the body of mm. Christ. That's right. And 
So even when I was a young preacher, and I hadn't, I hadn't even been a Christian that long, there was a practice in one of the churches I was in, and I know you and I have talked about it. Yeah. Your home church did this same thing where mm -hmm. yeah, there was a Sunday morning, Sunday night service, and if you took communion on Sunday morning, you didn't take it again on Sunday night, but if you missed on Sunday morning and you had to work, you come on Sunday night, and they would make, in the church I was going to at the time, they would make these people walk up front and separate themselves from everybody else so that we could serve one of them, and I began to say, hey, it's really not the way. We don't separate people out to take communion. And mm -hmm. they, they, did, you know, they had all kinds of reasons. And I was young, so mm -hmm. you know, who's going to listen to young me? Mm -hmm. it, it, but I said, well, that's fine. Just know that every time somebody walks up to take it, I'm going to walk up and take it with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I say all of that to even the way we wind up doing communion, I feel bad for the people who are sheltering in place, and they're the only person in their place. Right. Yes. Now, I'm trying to take it with you through the camera. Of course. Mm -hmm. I of really course. am, and I hope you can sense we're together. Mm -hmm. But there is an aloneness that's taking place that isn't supposed to be there. Sure. Right. Yep. And I know, you know, we, it's, I, hopefully this is temporary, but our bodies do interact with our, our spirits, spirits and our souls, and True. they tell us things. Yeah. And we begin to believe things out of what we're being told by what we're doing that aren't necessarily good for us. When both of y'all were talking, it made me think of an example uh, that I experienced. Um, and I, this is part of what I love so much about communal, uh, specifically about our worship uh, communally together, is that, and this comes as a product of relationships that you build within the church. Once I begin to um, become a part of the body of Christ and I... I know your story, and you know my story, and we start to be, and, and, and in, a, in a large church, you can't know that about everybody, but you, you begin to know the stories of people that you're uh, fellowshipping with and, and worshiping with. It has been the joy of my Christian walk to sit in a room every Sunday and listen to the songs being sung, read the lyrics, and then watch the people whom I know their stories, mm -hmm. sing those lyrics. I remember one night when we used to have our midweek service where we worshiped together. And much like, for those of you who are new to our church, it was much like what we used to do in nights of worship where we right. just come together and we worshiped and we sang. And, and I remember singing songs about, uh, I think it was one of the old songs that we talked about, um, even when a, you know life is not going well, still I will praise you. There was yeah. this old song yeah, that yeah, we used to sing. Mm -hmm. I remember that song, and it was it was basically saying, no matter what life throws at me, I'm still going to trust God. I'm going to praise Him. And there's a woman who walks in, and I know her story very well. She's in the midst of going through a divorce. It's n it's nasty. It's ugly, and she's got her hands raised to the sky, singing those words, and I lost it. Mm -hmm. It just fell apart because I knew. Her faith in that moment was ministering to me. And right. that, that doesn't happen unless we're in the same room together. No, it's you the thing, I mean? you know, there's the psalmist says at one point, it's a verse that gets quoted a lot. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. But that whole part before that in the psalm, he basically talks about, I've been out among people that hate the name of God. Mm -hmm. I've been beaten down all week. And then he said, but then he made the decision to go beat with the saints. And he says, and when they sung, mm. they sung hope into me. me. Mm. I have also had that where I was the guy that was going to have to get up. And I remember one particular Sunday that I had to get up and speak. And just before I got up at the 9 o'clock service, I found out that a very good friend of mine had been raped the night before. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I, was, I couldn't sing. And so mm. the crowd sang hope into mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. I heard them. I heard them sing, and I thought, I know that there's some people who don't ever sing, they, but that by being a part of it, it breathes hope into us. Mm -hmm. And here's what we know for sure. It's really hard to sing by yourself with the same kind of way in your living room. It's even harder if there are two of you in there and one of you doesn't sing. It's yeah. even harder when your kids are talking out mm -hmm. loud. Yeah, my it, family's not really singing during these online no, experiences. It's just I mean, it's just not... It doesn't feel the same. It doesn't feel authentic for yeah. me. So we're trying to make, again, 
And we are so thankful for the feedback we've gotten from you yeah, all. Absolutely. And we are trying our best to connect with you. And we're not, yes. we're not, this is not saying anything about you guys. Mm -mm. Uh, Jason just wanted us to talk about that behind the scenes stuff so you could know. We are trying to figure that out. Well, and I think it's, I, th I think the reason I, 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 we want to talk about it as well is this isn't just an issue for us of, and I know, I know this is part of the thing Jason wanted us to talk about. We may have hit all this anyway, but it's not just an issue of content for us to get to people. And so it's not an issue. This is not a technology issue for us. Mm -hmm. We are very thankful for the technology that we have that allows us to do what we're able to do. Um, and I know that's often the way things like this get viewed is, well, just come up with a strategy with the technology you have. The issue we have is we do believe there is a spiritual component to all of this that the technology in and of itself, just left alone using the technology, can't solve. Doesn't mean we're not going to solve it, we're yeah. not going to find a problem. Those are what the arguments are about. Is <laughs> it's, we are not having arguments about whether we should use Google Meet for a meeting or oh, Zoom. No. We are not having you know, conversations about Yeah, you. when people say to me, hey, you wanted me to do Google Meet, but we're using FaceTime, I go, okay. Whatever. Yeah, yeah whatever. Our <laughs> issues, I, don't, I don't care. Yeah, our issues are not... Um, logistics or technology we're trying to figure out with the best that we can and with you in mind how can we minister to your needs and you can minister to one another's needs that it's a spiritual issue for us and so anyway I, I that's the part I think when we often talk about you know and we say this every Sunday it's not content church is not content it's communal yep. that's really what we mean is there is something lost by us not being physically together that we are trying to as a church staff and hopefully you're trying to figure this out with the people you know how can we regain some of that 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 we have lost and and there's a part of you know i it the statement that everybody and i've had people say it to me negatively and positively and i've said it positively of this isn't the church and they're right the building isn't the church it's not we are the church yeah. but it is we we, yes. we are the church it's not I. Am I, am not, I am not the church. <laughs> yeah. I, I do not represent the body of Christ. But I do believe that when the church is together and all the parts of the body are operating the way it has, people who don't know Jesus are as close as they can be to being with Jesus when they're with the church 100%. operating as the way it is. There's something that spiritually, supernaturally happens and so that's a conversation we're trying to have all the time is how can we, and not only how can we be communal, people have been around at Community Christian, you know, at the heart of Community Christian is what Jesus asked us to do, which is to make disciples, to go and make, and we're not, we don't know how to do that in this medium either, yeah. To, yeah. because it boils all of it down again to a words and delivery system Content. and not... We know that a big part of what has helped a lot of people at Community Christian is when you walk into one of our campuses and you look around and go, when they say no perfect people, yeah. <laughs> I see them. They mean yeah. it. <laughs> and it's the community. It's not just that any of us are the best speakers in the world. Right. It's that no. you're in the community and the message has a different feel than when you're sitting on your couch with a tablet or you're watching on your phone or you're watching on the TV. And see, as an old guy, I know... This medium is just a different from TV ministry, and TV ministry has been around since I was a little boy, and here's the untold secret that nobody tells you about TV ministry. We know, and we know this by stats, that when you go around and you ask people, how did you become a Christian? It's almost unmeasurable the amount of people that ever became a Christian by watching something on TV. Right. It encourages Christians. Yes. Mm -hmm. It may help Christians, mm -hmm. but the amount of people that have been reach that weren't Christian, they got reached through this. We already know we're fighting an uphill battle because that's not like four weeks of data. Yeah. We have 60 years of data yeah, right. that this hasn't happened. And they should know that that question you just raised is the number one question that we are wrestling with right yes. now yeah. in our meetings is how do we continue to reach people in this new world that we're living in. Yeah. That, that really is the question that's Yeah, so, you know, even like with Easter, which is always a big, you know, we have, we try to do three real big pushes so we aren't pushing all the time of getting people to invite your friends so we can collectively try to work together. And Easter is one of our big times. Yeah. Not the biggest ever. We had a really 
big argument last week. <laughs> <laughs> and when he uh, says argument, it's not like oh, nobody anger. Got it. Nobody it's not, got it. It's I passion. Think, that's right, it's passion. passion. Yeah, we don't, it's, we don't angry at each other. It, it's that we were just about to announce to you all on Sunday a plan that we had, and yeah. we were about to get ready to, to launch the whole thing, and we hear the governor's got the shelter-in-place order mm -hmm. coming out. And again, we're trying to do that battle of how do we do what the government's asking us to do and what is best for people health-wise. How can we mm -hmm. do that right. while doing what God has asked us to do that stood 2,000 years and has gone through health crisis before. This oh, yes. isn't the first time yeah. that the mission of the church has had to battle this. We just have to... Have, and we had a plan. It was a great what? plan. We all loved it. It involved chocolate and it, peanut butter. It involved Reese's <laughs> eggs. You'd have loved we, it. You'd have loved, loved Reese's. We, loved. Had, we had lots of Reese's eggs, and we were ready to, to do it. Yeah. And then we had this big discussion, and we just shut the whole thing down. Yeah. And really tabled it for the weekend, and it really was hard. It was a weight on me of... That's not who we are. We've got to figure out how to do this anyway. Well, it left us without anything of any reach piece this week, which we... It was just going to be us collection We're just going to get together for it, Easter. It, it, it celebrate. And it, uh. Easter is a celebration for Christians, but it is the proclamation of the event that changed the world for non-Christians. Yes. <laughs> so, back speaking of that, if you haven't seen yet, and if you haven't, then you haven't been on this channel, but uh, we just released on uh, yesterday, actually, or two days ago, uh, on no, our YouTube just, channel. No, it was yesterday. It was yesterday. Well, this will be posted on Wednesday. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Jason's thinking way thinking ahead. ahead. Jason, I'm, Jason's yeah. ahead of the game. Jay, as always, Jason's in front of everybody right. else. Good for you, Jason. On Monday. <laughs> on Monday, yes. yes. We released this new strategy where we hope to reach some yes, people. Yes, absolutely. So, yes. Let's talk about that. So we, taught, we, we encourage everybody. We, we've got a website. Easter4Coweta.com. So if you haven't seen that yet, that's where we're going to push everybody to go uh, for Easter. We're going to we're going to live stream the service on that site. It'll also be right here, right where you've always watched it. But just for people on the outside to find us, that know that something is going to happen in Coweta for Easter that we, you know, we're inviting everybody to come to. So we and, pushed and don't you think that that website has so much more attraction nowadays because. It doesn't sound like it's just one church, and it's we really are a county. We're all going through this thing together. Right. Sure. And when you advertise it, it really is, hey, something's happening for our county. For county. It just, yeah. it, it has a whole different feel to it. Yeah, so we push people to break out signs like they're telling us to do, put signs in your windows, sure. you know, to encourage people uh, and uh, to, to put out to your neighbors, sidewalk chalk. I saw know. some people doing sidewalk chalk yeah. that posted it on, yep. on our uh, on Yeah, Facebook. they're already doing so that. That was great. I yeah. saw somebody uh, sent me a photo. They put it in the back window of their car. That's great. So Very, I love good. that. Very cool. So anything we can do to let people know that that site is there because, you know, again, everything's online. So we're going to do that uh, on Easter Sunday. Um, uh, just to, uh, today, which is Tuesday, uh, we just posted a, uh, a, a page where we got some graphics for social media. Yep. Absolutely. That you can go to, if you go to our website, community-christian.net, uh, it's right there on the home page, and you can take these graphics that we put share together, them. share them on your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter feed, text them directly to people, yep. whatever, and uh, just get the word out. And, uh, and again, just trying to be as inviting and communal as we possibly can to get as many folks to join us on Sunday. Here's what we know, and I don't know this about in this medium, but I know any time I have had it happen, and I hear this from everybody else, you never are as in tune with what's happening in a service when you know that somebody you invited yes. is there watching. Yep. It changes everything. Yep. So if you want to boost your level... <laughs> <laughs> uh, invite some people and then check on them Sunday morning. Hey, you're going to join us, you know, yep. uh, change everything. Talk over ch with the chat room or, you know, text them, yeah. try to reach out to them, you know, try to make your experience with them as communal as possible. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So we are not taking off from inviting just because no. of this world. We're no, doing. we're going to yeah. keep trying to figure that out. And yeah. hopefully find some new and, 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 you know, like he talked about, you know, maybe we'll learn some things from all of this and we'll have, we'll have new ways and we'll have new ideas to present as far as reaching people. Well, as you guys know, we said in our meeting yesterday that if this is our new reality, it's time for us to stop thinking. Maybe the reason television never worked, I, I, I'm ha all of this is me thinking out loud, <laughs> is no, everybody knew it was just an auxiliary thing. Mm -hmm. We still have churches. We mm -hmm. still have, we still can meet in person and people. And so this is just another thing. 
But if this is what we have for now, mm -hmm. maybe if we all pray and we really work, God will help us figure out how to make this where it can be, where people, yeah. it, it doesn't have to stay that in. way. Mm -hmm. when, you're, when you're limited in choices, you get really creative yeah. and yes. to accomplish the purpose you need to accomplish. Well, yeah. like I was saying this, I think I was having a conversation with my wife about this last night, you know, for years, um, we had said, uh, and this is about small groups, we had said, I wonder if virtual small groups will work. Mm -hmm. sure. And we'd had that internal discussion, and what would that look like? We'd even and offered people a chance to be a part of them. Couldn't anybody it. be a part Yeah, of nobody it. really was in on it. And then now, here we are, and that's all we've got. All we so need. now we're all leaning into that medium. And I told her, I said, I think this is the push many of us maybe needed to explore this new medium. And now yep. maybe we'll come out to the other side of it and go, okay, it will work, but here's what we learned, and here's how we can make that better. And yes. here's how, and this, this is possibly going to be an even better medium than the previous well, we version doing. for some sure. people. Yeah, for sure. some people. You know, I, I don't anticipate everybody, everybody doing don't. that forever. I certainly wouldn't want to do it personally, but there are some that will. And now I want to be close enough to see people, but where they can't touch me. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> well, that's, that's why this six foot thing's working. Exactly. For you. I like to be in the room with you. But don't put your hands on me. Working awesome, <laughs> isn't it?